Um, well, uh, hello everyone. My name is Jacob Creedon. Um, I'm a software engineer. I work at a biotech company. I work on um, uh, I work on machines that synthesize RNA and DNA. Um, and in my free time, I like to work on little audio and video projects. Um, and uh, I'm playing around with um, uh, Rust on microcontrollers. Uh, so this talk is embedded with Rust uh, using um, the Rust programming language uh, on microcontrollers. Um, so uh, first off, why not C++? Um, uh, C++ um, is, um, it, it's unsafe by default. I mean, the, the uh, working with raw pointers is dangerous um, and it's very easy to make mistakes and introduce um, a whole wide variety of bug classes. Um, you know, and there, there exists tooling to kind of help protect you, um, but usually the, there are static analysis tools that are very expensive, proprietary. Um, and so um, kind of w what's, what's happened um, in the community is, um, you know, uh, uh, it's prompted development of new systems, uh, programming languages, uh, Go by Google, D, um, Rust uh, from Mozilla, um, and you know, what, what this has got people asking is, is, you know, should I be starting a new code base in C++? You know, and more and more people are saying, you know what, no. You know, we, we need to use something a little more modern, a little more safe. Um, but that got me asking a question, well, is that, that also true for embedded? You know, embedded is kind of a use, you know, special use case. Um, and, um, and so uh, with Rust, maybe. Um, the other two um, kind of rely on garbage collection, which is kind of a non-starter uh, for, for embedded work. Um, so, um, yeah, Rust uh, is a, a new systems language um, with one of its uh, main goals being safety. Uh, it has un unique features, um, uh, ownership, borrowing, lifetimes um, that uh, allow it to be free of data races um, and also uh, eliminates the need for garbage collection. Um, uh, it has very modern ergonomics. Um, it's not, um, it's very to use from a de development environment standpoint. Um, uh, a lot of that owing to Cargo. Uh, it's the uh, package and build, ma package manager and build system. Um, so, um, yeah, let's give it a, let's give it a go. Um, so, uh, uh, I picked a little project to kind of uh, help figure this out. Um, I'm building a little MIDI controller. Um, I do live sound events, and so sometimes it's just nice to have a little bit of um, uh, extra control service to work. So, uh, let's first start by trying to get a blinking light. Then let's get um, you know going to something. Um, more real, like uh, getting fader readings. Uh, so first, we'll pick up pick a hardware platform. Um, I just picked uh, F3 Discovery Board, pretty standard dev board from uh, ST. Um, not very expensive uh, onboard debugger. Um, next, let's get the tool chain up and running. Um, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, uh, rustup.rs. Rustup is a tool chain manager. Um, you just download it, install it, run it. Uh, you pick the nightly tool chain. Um, uh, features needed for embedded development uh, aren't yet in stable, um, but don't let it not being stable trick you. Nightly is, is pretty stable all on its own. It's just uh, Rust uh, has a pretty good ethos about guaranteeing uh, uh, API stability, and so th there are some APIs that they, they, they don't want to guarantee until they, they've actually worked out all the, the, the kinks. I think as a 4.25 that may have changed, like six weeks ago. Um, no, well, y y no, yes and no. <laughs> There's a little more nuance to that, but <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, we also need, ironically, a GCC. Um, really, we don't need the compiler, we just need GDB. Um, and then um, uh, GDB server is needed. Uh, OpenOCD is what I'm using with the um, onboard ST link. 
um, you know, J-Link, Blackmagic Probe, um, <laughs> uh, whatever floats your boat. Um, and then um, as far as editor's IDEs, uh, I'm sure lots of you are Vim and Emacs, you know, aficionados, uh, but uh, uh, if you're in the IDE space, uh, Visual Studio Code has a good plugin as well as IntelliJ IDEA. Um, yeah. Um, so we've got our tooling set up, um, but before we jump into the code, let's take a few minutes to talk about the ecosystem. Um, uh, like I was saying, uh, Rust has a package manager um, and build tool. It's called Cargo. Uh, it installs packages that are called crates. Um, uh, and it just works. It's very similar to uh, NPM or Yarn if you're in the node, uh, if you've done stuff with Node.js. Um, and yeah, just it downloads and builds the dependencies along with your project. Um, and so um, as, as far as the crates go, um, the community is kind of settling on dividing out functionality into different layers of abstraction. And we'll just kind of quickly go through that. Um, for, you know, first we've got our architecture crate. Uh, this is just um, bindings to registers that are common to a, a given architecture. Um, so, you know, with a, for example, Cortex-M, you've got a lot of common peripherals that you're going to see that are the same across all vendors. Uh, SysTick, ITM, um, you know, just kind of all the, the NVIC, all of your standard, you know, stuff, uh, you know, is available through, through an architecture crate. If you had a different architecture, um, you know, that you'd have a different crate providing, you know, those, those, those peripherals. Um, uh, next is is a is a device crate or sometimes called a chip support crate. Um, you know this is for uh, registers specific to the chip and its peripherals. Um, you know so your your uh, analog digital converters, timers, etc. Um, and usually uh, these crates are 90% auto generated. Uh, vendors usually provide what's called an SVD, um, which uh, is uh, a document that basically lists out what are all the, the peripherals, what are the registers, what are the bit fields within those registers, you know, and what, what you know, uh, values those are, uh, uh, those, those can have. And so uh, next we've got the uh, a HAL, Hardware Extraction Layer. Um, this is meant to be a uh, abstraction on top of uh, common device peripherals, um, to, and it's meant to provide a consistent interface. Um, for, for things like SPI, I2C, Serial, GPIO, um, and um, uh, I'm going to use the Arduino example, but like Arduino is a terrible how um, if you've ever tried to port it to other platforms. Um, but you know, when, when, you, when you load up Arduino and you say, you know, pin mode or digital write, you know, what's happening is, is underneath, you know, someone else has done the work of abstracting, okay, what does digital write mean? You know, oh, it means, you know, flipping this bit on this one register. Um, uh, uh, this is, is a, you know, and if you've ever looked under the horrors of the, the Arduino source code, they don't, they don't do it very well, and there's a lot of, like, <laughs> baked-in AVR, you know, assumptions. Um, uh, they, this, they've done it I think quite the, the right way, um, and it, it's, um, it makes things uh, like uh, implementing drivers a lot easier, um, you know, so a, a driver crate is for external components that, um, you know, like an accelerometer, um, you know, uh, so, you know, for example, on the F3, they, they give you an accelerometer, it's on I squared C. Um, its bindings only talk to a generic HAL interface. And so, you know, all you need to do is swap out under, under what's underneath, you know, and you've got a generic driver that, that's portable, you know, across different devices and platforms, um, which, is, which is really handy. Um, finally, um, there are board support crates. Um, these are, um, there, there's a little bit of implementation to them, but um, they are more just kind of a meta crate, uh, a collection of other crates to for targeting a specific development board. You know, so, um, you know, once again for the example, you know, with the F3 development board, you know, it kind of automatically will pull, you know, what's the correct architecture device um, and how create to target, you know, code for this board. 
Um, there aren't very many of these out there right now, um, but uh, for the ones that are around, it's very useful for, for getting up and running quick. Um, so speaking of which, let's get up and running real quick. Uh, that doesn't really come through on the projector very well. Um, uh, that's a full example of a blinking light, um, but let's take a look at it piece by piece. Um, first thing we do is, is our imports, uh, kind of like what we were talking about. You know, we, we have an architecture crate and our board support crate. And then in here, inside that, we're pulling out all the other things we need, the device, you know, the HAL. Um, then we do our initialization. Um, up at the top, we're, uh, um, you know, we're getting our Cortex peripherals, that's from our architecture, STM peripherals, that's from the device. We, um, we then kind of pick out individual peripherals that we need, you know, and so in this case, we just need the flash, the reset, and the GPIO um, controllers. Um, and then we, we basically stuff those references into to our abstractions. Um, and so, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, so we've got, for example, a delay um, a abstraction. You know, that's just taking our Cortex um, SysTick, you know, and, and turning it into to a simple timer for our delay. You know, our, our, L our LEDs, uh, you know, are coming from the GPIO. Um, and then the, these new objects that, that we've, we've created here kind of it, um, exists as our way of, you know, controlling, you know, the microcontroller. And so the main loop is pretty simple. You know, um, there's eight LEDs on this board. We're just going to turn on the first one. Um, we turn it on. We wait half a second, turn it off, wait half a second. You know, we've got, we've got Blinky. Um, and so um, I tried to embed video. It's, it's a nightmare. You're going to have to settle with this fake stop motion. It works, I promise. You can come bug me later if you really want to see it. Um, but um, yeah, last step, uh, build, flash, and debug. Uh, all you need to do to build is cargo build, um, which is incredible if you've ever had to deal with CMake and, and all the little things you've got to twiddle, it just, it just works, which is nice. Um, uh, we start up in the background our, our GDB server, um, and then it's just standard GDB. Uh, it's our remote target. We load and run. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, moving on to something maybe a little more complicated. Um, we've, we've got our uh, blinking LED, um, and that was a very simple example, um, and it was a lot of, all that functionality was covered by the HAL. Um, you're not always going to have a, a HAL for, for the functionality you're using for. Um, you know, HAL is meant to cover kind of the basic things. Um, chips generally have very specific peripherals that are not as easy to abstract. Um, and so um, let's um, kind of go over, you know, how do we um, write and read uh, registers um, with, without the HAL? Um, so, for the, um, so uh, let's try and read a value from, from a slider. Um, uh, setting up an ADC on this particular chip is a lot of work and it's very boring. So I'm just gonna pick one register as an example. Um, but I, I mean, it's, it's basically the same pattern. You know, we, 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 we take the, the peripheral um, from, from our device crate um, and then we just modify it, and so just kind of walking through the syntax, you know, th this is our peripheral, ADC1, you know, configuration, CFGR configuration, that's a register within that peripheral. You know, we say we, we modify it, um, and in here the syntax is we're jumping into a closure, um, and I, I, if you know what a closure is, great, if you don't, don't worry about it, it's just, you know, we're we're basically, we're, we're coming up with a list of commands that will get executed atomically. Um, so um, in this case, uh, whoa, kill myself while I do this. Um, you know, um, this, this is a 32-bit register. You know, it has various bits. So, you know, for example, I'm setting the alignment bit and I'm just clearing it. Uh, the continuous bit, I'm clearing that because I only want a single sample. Um, and then I want it to overwrite. 
So I set that bit, and it, it I mean, these, like I said, these are all auto-generated, um, so they have meaningful names that match what's in ST's reference manual, um, so it's pretty, pretty easy to follow along. Um, and then, um, so here's an example from the main loop. Um, um, you know, we set the start bit, uh, we do a busy wait, um, reading is pretty much this, the same as writing, you just dot read, you know, and then what, um, what bit within that register you, you want to read. Um, so we're going to busy wait for the, the AD to uh, complete the conversion, um, you know, we get that value from the register, we clear our status bits, we print it out, we wait half a second, and then, so here on the out, uh, here on the right is example output from that. Okay, so um, yeah, we've got analog values being read, uh, working proof of concept. Um, uh, that's kind of it for examples uh, that I've got to present. This is kind of where I am right now on my project. Um, we've now upgraded to a new dev board, uh, four motor, uh, motorized faders, MIDI input output, um, move to a one bitsy, it's smaller, easy to use. <laughs> um, Peter, yep, um, is here in the audience right now. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, so, what have we learned? Uh, we figured out how do we set up the tool chain, uh, what is cargo and the crate ecosystem as it exists now, uh, and, and how to utilize that ecosystem. Uh, we've learned how to read and write registers. Um, Overall, I, I think, like, to, to our earlier question, I think the answer is yes. We, we can use Rust for embedded. Um, um, but, uh, you know, wh let, let's talk about why not. Um, you know, there, there's, um, uh, the, the biggest thing is, is it's not quite yet stable. Um, breaking changes uh, happen every once in a while, um, and it ends up being a little bit of a yak to shave because once every two weeks, you, you kind of have to go through and get everything to 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 hit the the new new API. Um, uh, even just yesterday, you know, I, I pulled a project I hadn't touched in a couple of weeks, tried to build it, and it doesn't work on the latest nightly compiler anymore. Um, and it was a simple fix, but you know, if you let it sit for a month, you know, or two months, you know, the, the number of changes you needed to to make kind of pile up, and it's 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 more work than it's worth sometimes. Um, but um, yeah, um, the other thing is, is uh, examples are limited, and you know whatever is available is often outdated because uh, uh, the the breaking changes. Um, ecosystem, um, and then finally, the ecosystem is young. Um, Right now, it leans heavily towards Cortex M, and then within that, heavily towards STM32. Um, lots of people love STM parts, so that's not usually too big of a deal. But you know, um, if you're a, a Freescale fan um, or you know something uh, else, like um, there's a lot more work you just have to do on your own rather than just downloading and using a crate. Um, uh, the last thing I'll say. Um, Right now, I feel like um, Rust on microcontrollers is, is best if you have a lot to gain um, from its uh, safety features. Um, if you're doing very simple things where you're not touching a heap, you're, you're doing, uh, you're, you're not having to manipulate raw pointers in C, you know, C is still good enough. It's better to use the language you know than to try and jump into Rust because, oh, it's the hip new thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. Um, that being said, there, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, embed, uh, embedded is hitting Rust stable this year. Um, uh, a lot of those features are stabilizing. Um, and um, um, there are still, I think, a few couple things. Um, that are not in the, the, the stable compiler, um, but once that hits, kind of uh, the ecosystem is ready to, to lock down and say, okay, this is it, we're, we're done, or not done, but 
we're in a good spot, you know, let's start devoting more resources to it. Um, AVR support is coming soon. Um, Rust is, is uh, uh, based on uh, LLVM, so basically anything with an LLVM backend is supported by Rust. Uh, right now what that means is in the embedded world, that's just Cortex-M and MSP430. Uh, AVR support's coming soon. There's talk about RISC-V as well, um, but there's not very much RISC-V chips out, so uh, not a huge thing. Um, and then um, documentation is, is re really starting to take off. Um, people are um, um, uh, doing a good job at, 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 at pitching in, so um, thank you. And um, I d had planned for questions, but I don't know that we really have time. So um, you're welcome to come find me during lunch. Um, I'll probably have boards out and we can talk shop about whatever. So thanks. <laughs>